in this video, we're going to be building out this header. So we're going to make this card shape image with this title and button and search button there and have this animation come in and out as we scroll up and down in our collection view. So the first thing we need to do is lay out the header view. So this is going to consist of a bunch of different elements. We're going to have a card, which is a UI view. We're going to have a image view. We're going to have a search container. Which is just going to be a view. We're going to have a search bar. We're going to have a title label. Just going to use a text view for reasons that I'll talk about in a minute. Going to have a button. And finally, we need a separator. Cool. Couple of things to call out here. First of all, the search bar is just a button. I'm doing it that way because that's what the Airbnb app is doing. If you go tap on it, you'll see that it's literally just a button that opens a new view for searching. And the title label is a text view because this line height is not a thing I could figure out how to do with the label without having text get cut off. So the easiest way I could figure out how to get the spacing in a reasonable way was to use a text view. So that's what we're going to do. Other than that, it's all pretty straightforward. So I'm going to just move forward here. I'm going to set the background color to black because that's what color is up there. Then we are going to mask some corners on the card. We need the max x min y and the min x max. Sorry, min min x min y corner. That will give us the top left and right, but not the bottom. Then we need to set the corner radius. So we can say card layer corner radius equals 20. We need to set mass to bounds. Equal to true. Then the image views content mode. It's gonna be scale aspect fill. We're going to set the image equal to UI yeah, image named background. The search containers, background color is going to be system background. The search bar. Its background color is going to be secondary system background. The search bar dot layer dot corner radius is going to equal 22. We're going to set the title to where are you going for normal. Set the title color to label for normal. 
I'm going to set the tint color equal to system pink because that's our brand color. Search bar title label. Font it's going to be a custom font, which is going to be called that button. We haven't made that yet, so we'll come back to it. Search bars, image view, content mode, scale aspect fit, and the search bar image, edge, and sets are going to be 14, 0, 14, 4. And that'll get us pretty close on the placement for that magnifying glass. Oh, I forgot to set the image. Let's do that up here next to the title color. Search, set, image. This is going to be a UI image system name magnifying glass. Okay, I think that's all we need there. Now the title label text is going to Cool. Go new line near. A text color is going to equal white. Title label font is going to equal custom style large title, which again we haven't defined yet. So we'll come back to that. Title label, we're going to write a function for setting the line height in a minute. So I'll just write it out now. Set Again, we haven't written that yet, so we'll come back to it. We want is scroll enabled equal to false. We want is editable equal to false. And we want is selectable equal to false. Finally, we want the background color to be clear. Now for the button background color, we're going to set that to secondary system background. The button's layer corner radius is going to be six. We're going to set the title to explore nearby stays or normal. We're going to set the title color to label for normal. And we will set the font equal to button once we've written it. Then the edge insets we're going to set content edge insets to 8888. Finally, we're going to set the separator equal to oh, background color equal to quaternary label. All right, let's go add those fonts so we can get that created. So I'm just going to copy this up here and we'll have large title it's going to be 64 with heavy 
Then we need a button, which I'm going to add down here. We use the headline textile. This needs to be 13 weight semi bold. Okay, then we'll add a case for large title, a case for button. Cool. So now if we go back to the header view, we can uncomment those. Then we need to add our set line height multiple. We're going to do this in an extension on UI text view. First thing we need to do is make a paragraph style. We're going to set the paragraph styles line height multiple to the line height multiple we're given. Then we need an NS mutable attributed string. And there are a couple of options for what that can be. So if our text view already has an attributed string, we're gonna hold it in here. So if let attributed text equal attributed text, attributed string equals ns mutable attributed string from attributed string attributed text. So if our text view has an attributed string already, we'll grab that and use it to make our mutable attributed string from. If it doesn't, we will just grab the text from the text view and use that to make an NS mutable attributed string. Otherwise, we don't have anything to do, so we're just going to return. Now, I think this will pull from the text if the text sending a new value will replace the value of text. So if there's a text value, this may just pull it out. So this may be unnecessary, but I felt it was safer to do it this way than not. Then we need to say our attributed string is going to add an attribute. The dot paragraph style value our paragraph style in an NS range from zero to attributed string dot length. So that will set it for the whole line of the text. And then we just need to set our attributed text equal to the attributed string. Okay, so now we can uncomment that function. We can set our line height multiple to get this appearance. And finally, we're going to add one other helper to UI view, which just lets us set the alpha of the background. So we're going to say set background
which looks like a simple little extension, but it will make some things easier for us in a minute. And we will use that to set the alpha of the search container's background. So here we set the background color, but when the header is expanded, we actually want it to be clear. And we just want it to have opacity when it's fully collapsed like this. And we'll transition from fully faded out to fully faded in. But when we start, we want it to be fully faded out. So that's what we're dealing with in configure. We're gonna say set background alpha to zero. And that should compile. Now we can write constraint. So what we need to do here is add subviews card title label button separator. Then we need to add some subviews to the card the image view and the search container. Then we need to add to the search container the search bar. Our height anchor is going to equal 600 for now. The card's top anchor is going to equal the top anchor plus 40. Card's horizontal anchors is going to equal horizontal anchors. The card's bottom anchor is going to equal the bottom anchor. The image views edge anchors are going to be the cards. The card's edge anchors. The search container top anchor is going to equal the cards. Top anchor, search container, horizontal anchors is going to be the cards, horizontal anchors, and sorry, the search container, height anchor is going to be greater than or equal to 60. The search bar, height anchor is going to equal 44. Top anchor is going to be greater than or equal to the search containers top anchor plus 24. The search bars top anchor is also going to be greater than or equal to the safe area layout guide top anchor plus 12. And it's that combination of constraints which will give us this cool effect where the search container continues up to the top, but the search bar kind of lands right there. And then the search bar's horizontal anchors need to equal the search container's horizontal anchors plus 24. Then the title label, top anchor, needs to equal the safe area layout guide, top anchor, plus 160. Title label, leading anchor, it's going to equal the leading anchor, plus 24. The button, top anchor. Equal the title labels bottom anchor in the buttons leading anchor can equal the title labels leading anchor separator it's gonna have a height anchor equal to one it's going to have horizontal anchors equal to the horizontal anchors and it is going to have a bottom anchor equal to the bottom anchor of the card or of the view. Cool. So with that, we can run the app and see 
that it looks pretty close to the spec. We're not quite right on the top here and the status bar isn't showing yet, but in terms of layout and whatnot, it's looking pretty good. Obviously it doesn't collapse yet. But let's fix that top space. So part of the problem here is that we need to account for the safe area when we're expanded, but we want to go all the way up into the safe area when we're collapsed. So we need to be referencing off of the top, but we want to take the safe area into account when it's expanded. So how we're gonna do that is add a property, to hold some information, we're gonna actually add a couple properties. We're gonna add a private variable called max top space. It's gonna be a CG float, which equals 40. And we need a private var top space constraint, which is just an NS layout constraint. And I'm just gonna make it be an empty one for now. We're gonna reassign it and constrain, which we can do with Anchorage by grabbing the card. Oh, this is configure. Here we go. The card to top anchor. We're gonna say the top space constraint equals this constraint. And then in safe area insets did change, we're gonna override that. We're gonna say max top space equals 40 plus the safe area insets dot top. And then we're gonna set the top space constraints constant equal to the new max top space. So what this will do is figure out how high the safe area inset is on the top for the device we're running on. If there isn't one, then it'll be zero and we'll just leave it at 40. And if there is one, we'll add 40 to whatever it is. So now we'll be 40 points down below the safe area, which is what we're going for here. And I think the reason for this is in the original because they had this link about COVID-19 in there. I didn't actually make this label, but we could add it pretty, pretty easily. So that fixes that problem. The other thing we need to fix is the status bar. We're gonna do that in home view controller. It's here. Pretty simple. We're gonna add a private variable called status bar style, which is a UI status bar style, I'll set equal to light content. And then we need to override preferred. Status bar style. And here we just need to return our status bar style that we're holding on to. So that should be pretty easy. We're telling it to be light, which is what we want most of the time because this is black. And so we need to show the light content. There we go. Looking pretty good. Okay, now we just need to make it collapsible which is going to take some work, but it's honestly not as complicated as I thought it was gonna be when I first started trying to implement this. So what we're gonna do is, in the header view, which I'll pull over here, so that it's kind of where I'm expecting it to be. I'm gonna add an extension down here, just that's gonna be the place where we do animation stuff. I'm gonna have a function called update header new y cg float old y cg float which returns cg float. So what this is gonna do is give whoever owns this header view a place to hook in and say, I am doing some scrolling in my view, I need you to update the header based on some information. 
and that information is going to be a new Y coordinate, an old Y coordinate, and I need you to return to me an uh, updated Y coordinate based on whether or not you moved, whether or not you moved. So right now, all we're going to do is return new Y. So where we're going to call that from is in home view. And we're going to do a scroll view delegate method for this. So I'm going to add an extension on home view, which is UI collection view delegate. And what we're looking for is scroll view did scroll, which gets called a lot while you're scrolling. And uh, we'll do some stuff in here. First, we need to add a variable, we're going to add private variable old y offset to the cg float equals zero. So this is where we're going to hold on to what the previous y offset was because we'll use that for our calculations. While we're up here, we're going to set the delegate for the collection view equal to self since we are uh, conforming to that protocol now. Okay, back down in this method. We need to say let the y offset equal the scroll view, which we get here. It's content offset y. Then we need to let the updated y equal the header view, the update header with the new y, y offset, and the old y, old y offset. We are going to then set the scroll views content offset y equal to the updated y. And we're going to set the old y offset equal to the scroll views content offset y. So we get the current one, the new one. We pass that information on to the header. And we get back an updated one. We update the scroll view with the updated Y. And then we update our old one so that the next time this gets called, it doesn't pile on. So right now we're not doing anything in there. We, we have an interception point, but we're not actually doing anything. So we can still scroll and it still looks fine, compiles. We're just passing numbers around. But that's great because now we have a place where we can override the logic on scrolling. Right here, an update header. So if you think about it, there's a couple criteria that we need to meet when we want to collapse. Right now, in this state, we want to collapse if the user is moving their finger upwards in the scroll view and the height is less than zero or less than the minimum, whatever that is. So we need to be moving up. Right here, we're not going to collapse anymore because that's as small as it goes. And we need to be within the bounds of the content. Now that doesn't really mean anything because by the time we get out of the content down here, I guess if we are pulled down and then push up right here. So we're pulled down. So we're past the, we're in the negative content offset of the scroll view. And if we are now scrolling up, we don't want it to scroll up yet until the content hits the separator and then we want to start pushing up. So those are the three criteria. So that's how we're going to kind of calculate our logic here. So the, the, it's a lot of math, so I'm trying to keep it straightforward. So first we're going to have a delta, the difference between the new y and the old y. Then we're going to have a Boolean called is moving up equal to the delta is greater than zero. So if the new y is greater than the old y, or well, if the new y minus the old y is greater than zero, that means the user is moving their finger up. If we're going to have another Boolean called let is in content equal to the new y is greater than zero. So that means the place where the scroll is happening is within the content in the scroll view. And 
let has room to collapse is going to be the current offset is greater than the min height. And we don't have either of those things yet, but the logic is there. Or this is what the logic will be. So then we know we should collapse if we are moving up and is in content and has room to collapse. If those three things are true, we should collapse. And if we should collapse, we are going to move the current offset. We're going to subtract the delta from the current offset. And we're going to return the new y minus the delta. What the current offset is going to be is the offset of our height constraint, which we haven't made a wrapper for yet, but let's do that now. The first thing we're going to do is add actually the min height. So I'm going to put this up at the top. And I'm just writing it out like this because this would be roughly 44. Oh, sorry, this 44 is the height of this button. We want 12 points on either side of it when we're fully collapsed. So the height is gonna be 12 points here, 44 points here, 12 points here, plus whatever the safe area is. So that's just giving us room for our button. Then we're gonna define the max height. equal to 600 and we're going to have another constraint that we hold on to so we need to capture that so we're going to say height constraint equals the height anchor equals 600 but we'll use max height here we're using this because if we needed to programmatically update this, the height of the header based on the content, we could do it this way, but for now we're just setting it to a static 600. Then down here by our animation, we're gonna have this pass through variable called current offset. And when we get that, we're just going to return the height constraint constant. When we set it, we're going to call this animate function that we're about to write, which we will put down here. So there we go. So that should give us everything we need. Now we just need to actually animate in our animate function. So here we're going to say, we're going to clamp this between the min height and the max height. And then we're going to set the height constraint equal to that clamped value. And what that should do, so we're gonna subtract the delta from the current offset, which is going to call this animation function with the new value, which is the current offset minus the delta. It's gonna clamp that into the, we're gonna get the minimum value between the current, the value passed in and the max. 
So the most it can be is the max height. And then we're going to take the maximum value of that and the minimum height. So the least it can be is the min height. And then we're going to set that to the height constraints constant. So now I should be able to run the app and see it collapse when we scroll up. Interestingly, it is not expanding because we only have the criteria for collapsing, but the logic seems to be working. So that's good. So now for expanding, we have pretty similar logic. We need to check, is it moving down? And that is the delta is less than zero and is beyond the content. and has room to expand equals the current offset is less than the max height. And we're going to say let should expand equal is moving down and is beyond content and has room to expand. And fortunately, the logic of what we do in the case of uh, expanding is exactly the same. So we can just say or should expand. We're going to do the same thing because now the delta will be negative. It's less than zero. So we're going to subtract that from the current offset, meaning we're going to add the delta to the current offset. So we'll expand. So now if we run it, we should be able to both collapse and expand it. There we go. It's looking pretty good so far. We just need to polish it up a little bit. So if we look at the spec, we can see that the top of the card moves up as we go, but it doesn't start moving until we get about halfway. Same thing with the animation for the search container. It's, it fades in from zero opacity to 100% when we get there, but it doesn't start until we're about halfway up. So let's deal with those. We are going to, in our animate function, get a normalized version of this value. What this is going to do is give us a value between 0, 0.0 and 1.0, reflecting how far through the animation we are. So when we're down here, we're going to be at 1.0. When we're all the way up at the top, we're going to be at 0, 0.0. That's what the normalized value will tell us. That makes some of these animations a little easier to reason about. So we are going to switch on that. And when it is anything less than 0 0.5, we're going to do one thing. And otherwise, we're going to do another thing. And to keep this clean, I'm going to make two private functions. There we go. So now we have a place where we can do our animations before for the first half and the second half. In the animate to 50 function, we're going to get a new top value. And that's going to be normalized times two times the max top space. We're going to set the top space constraints constant equal to the new top. 
value and we're going to set these search containers. We're going to say the search container set background alpha equal to one minus normalized times two. So when normalized is 25%. That means we're roughly right here we're at zero, right here we're at 50. So right here we're about 25%. So let's take that as an example. So if normalized is 0 0.25, what this is going to do is say 1 minus 0 0.25 times 2. So 1 minus 0 0.5 or 50. So we should be at roughly 50% opacity here. When we're at 50%, somewhere around here, Normalize is going to be 0 0.5 times 2 is 1, so we'll be at 0. That's the opacity we want there. And at 0, 0 times 2 is 0, minus 1, so we're at full opacity here. That's what's going on there. Then in the animate to 100, we just need to say top space constraint equals max top space, just to make sure it's there. And the search container set background alpha to zero. So now if we run it, we should see things start to move as we get past 50%. And my search container constraints don't look like they're quite right. So let's fix that. But other than that, the animation was functioning properly. So let's look at the constraints. We've got the search container. I don't have anything constraining the bottom of the search container. Should I? Yes. Missing one constraint down here. We need the search bar bottom anchor to equal the search container bottom anchor minus 12. And with that, we should see, oh yeah, there we go. So we have it good and fading to white as we go. The card moves up there nicely, stops where it's supposed to. So that's looking pretty good. Now we need to update the status bar. It doesn't automatically update when we put white content behind it, so we need to tell it to update. Uh, but we have to handle that in the view controller. So what we're going to do is delegate up. So we're going to define a delegate protocol called header view delegate, which is any object. Then we need to hold on to a delegate here. So we're going to say weak bar delegate as a header view delegate. And we're going to add a private variable status bar style, which is going to hold the status bar style that this header view thinks the status bar should be. And when we change that, we're going to call our delegates update status bar style to the new status bar style. Then we need to do the same thing in home view. So in home view, we're going to add a protocol for a delegate. And it is going to have a function called update status bar style to style and it is going to have a weak bar delegate which is a home view delegate and it is going to 
set the delegate of the header view. to self and then it's going to conform to that protocol extension I'm gonna build so that I'll get this step for free and all we need to do here is say delegate update status bar style to style. Okay, then we just need to adopt it in the view controller. So here, we're gonna add an extension on home view controller, home view delegate, update status bar style. And here we're gonna just say status bar style equals style. And we're going to tell UI view to animate with duration 0 0.4 animations self set needs status bar appearance update. Then back in the header view and animate to 50. We just need to check if we should update the status bar style. So if the new top it's greater than, I'm oh, sorry, less than 24. And the status bar style does not equal dark content. Status bar style equals dark content. I'm making this check to make sure we're not needlessly changing the status bar style and calling those delegate methods all the time. And I'm making this check. I'm guessing the status bar is roughly 24. Like the point where the line crosses the status bar is roughly 24 points. It's not exact, but close enough. So if the new top is greater than 24 and the status bar style does not equal light content, then the status bar style needs to equal light content. And I think I forgot one more thing. We need to, in here, set the delegate. Content view.delegate equals self. There you go. Now if we run it, we should see that update. So it's white right now. If we scroll up right as we cross it, it should fade to black. There we go. Now it's visible both when we're expanded and collapsed. Works pretty nicely as you scroll right through it. It animates through, doesn't just cut from one to the other. There's just one small problem. We are supporting dark mode in our app. Oops, wrong button. I always click this one when I always intend to click that one. <laughs> uh, this is the button I'm looking for. We're going to set it into dark mode. Now, because our background is always black, this makes sense. It should still be light content. Problem is, our search container background is going to be black now. Uh, so when we get up here, we're going to be fully black. And we need the status bar style to stay white. So we could perform that check really anywhere we want, but we have access to the trait collection in the view controller. So I'm just going to check there if. We're in dark mode, so in this update status bar style, we're just going to check if the status bar style currently equals light content and the trait collection user interface style equals dark, then we're going to return. And that should keep us from unnecessarily. So in light mode, we still have the right colors, both in expanded and collapsed states. And in dark mode, we're good there, and it stays white when we're fully collapsed. So there we go. So now we have this great looking dark mode version of the Airbnb homepage. Hopefully they will uh, adopt it themselves someday. All right.
Now, just a few caveats for the pedants out there. Um, there are some parts of this animation that aren't quite right in the real version. When you scroll down right here, it kind of bounces a little bigger, which we're not accounting for here. And in the real version, you can scroll up and down in the header to perform this animation. Right now, we're not accounting for that. And that that's okay. Those are both things that should be relatively easy to add within this framework. And you can take that work on yourself if you want um, to go farther with this project. Another thing you could do is the real Airbnb app. This button kind of animates up a little bigger off of the screen whenever you click on it rather than fading. So you could take that on yourself as well. But uh, this, I'm pretty satisfied with how this has turned out. So I'm going to stop here. So there you go. Uh, we laid out this header. We looked at one way you could kind of capture the scroll view events and use them to animate, animate a, a related piece of content on the screen, whatever that happens to be in your context. Uh, and then we looked at a way of kind of keeping the logic for that segmented uh, in a way that you can reason about later and you can read the code and see what's going on. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it or learned something or at least found something you could take away and try out in your own code. I'll uh, see you next time.